What's going on YouTube? It's Giga here, bringing you some more Series 9 Wi-Fi battles with live commentary. Today we're using a new team. This was developed by Jose M. Cabre, and it made it all the way to the top 32 qualifier for the second um, VR circuit. So this is a really cool team because of the fact that uh, it features the nut core. This is something that I actually haven't used before, so I'm really excited to try it out. A lot of people talk about uh, just how powerful it really is, and I'm really excited to see uh, what it can do. There's also some really interesting non-conventional sets that I really, really like. Like there is the substitute on the Niligo that you don't see every day, but also more like the more focus for me is that Tapu Fini. So this is a, a timid Tapu Fini that's really fast and has things like Taunt, Nature's Madness, uh, Icy Wind and Reflect. So it's a lot of different control for this team that you don't really get anywhere else. Also, there is that Clefable with Unaware to stop things that like trigger a weakness policy and go for boosts. You do have redirection with follow me as well as life do for recovery, which is something I feel like you don't really see a lot of in VGC. So I'm, I'm really excited to try that out. And finally, we do have uh, Heatran, pretty standard Heatran, also Taunt as well, which like I said, is fairly uncommon. And Heatran is one of my, honestly, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. So I'm really, really excited to try this team out. And yeah, as always, the rental just, uh, code is here. And, and that being said, let's just hop into the first game. All right, game number one, it is Snorlax, Sylveon, Porygon 2, um, Metagross, a, an Arcanine, and Salamence. So, what? I really like Nihiligo, right? Nihiligo deals with Salamence, it deals with um, the Sylveon really well, and it deals with Arcanine. So I don't really see a reason not to bring Nihiligo. So I'm going to go with Nihiligo and... I like Thunderous as a, a secondary. Also, mm, I could do Heatran. Heatran, I think, is tempting because of the fact that it has Taunt. So I'm going to go with Nihiligo Heatran. Uh, in the back, what? I think Tapu Fini... Yeah, this is actually tricky because this Tapu Fini doesn't have um, Protect... But I think I think Tapu Fini still makes sense. It does. I mean, not reflect, um, protect, and it doesn't have a fairy move. But I still think uh, Tapu Fini is a good option here. Kaferi, maybe. Kaferi is actually really tempting because of the fact that it does have redirection and it ignores boosts. So in the event that they trigger a weakness policy, I think having that as an option is really nice. But I'm hoping. Nihiligo can really set up against my opponent. It might be an early max, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing with two max moves that really just do a lot of damage. And I think anything that can deal with Nihiligo can't really deal with Heatran. So we're going to see Arcanine and Porygon 2. So pretty good lead. I think we can freely go for um, a max Rockfall into the Arcanine and then go for a taunt onto the Porygon. Cause I don't, yeah. Uh, Arcanine does not get, um, what's it called? Does not get access to fake out, but the big fear is if they go for a snarl, but even still, I don't think that's the worst position to be in overall. Um, well, yes, these two are special attackers, if we are able to stop that Porygon, I think that's our best bet. Obviously, the big fear... What is the big fear? I guess, yeah, the Snarl. And then having a Focus Sash, because that means we don't get the uh, boost onto Nihiligo as a result of like Beast Boost picking up the Knockout. So that could be, that could be a little bit scary. Uh, but I do think that Heatran having access to Taunt really is going to put us in... Uh, a good position overall because we don't have to necessarily worry about that Porygon getting too set up. So interestingly, they're not going to switch, which um, is a little interesting and makes me definitely think they're going for an ally switch. I mean, not an ally switch, but I feel like Snarl for sure. Okay, so we're going to see Protect on Arcanine. I think that that's fine. They are trying to stall out um, our max turns a little bit, but... We do manage to pick up some big damage. Yeah, that's that's a lot of damage, even through the Protect. And yeah, not even a critical hit. 
So this is really good. We do also get the taunt onto this Porygon, so it should not have damage really into either slot. Yeah, they're going for a Trick Room, and now we can pretty easily pick up the KO onto Arcanine and just start getting damage onto the Porygon. They don't really have anything that can eat either a Rockfall or... I guess an... Uh, I'm going to go for an Earth Power onto the Porygon slot. They do have switch-ins that are safe, but at the same time, like I'm not super, super worried. The big threat is obviously going to be something like uh, Metagross, but they didn't switch out again. So we do pick up the Knockout onto their Arcanine, which is really great because we're going to get a special attack boost, right? It should be special attack. Yeah, special attack boost is great. And we're going to get some big damage onto... This Porygon, uh, just kidding, we're going to get no damage onto this Porygon. They do go for an Ice Beam, which isn't going to do anything, uh, but the thing now is we do want to keep Heatran alive just due to the fact that um, it has damage output. So this is, okay, so this is actually what I was most worried about is the fact that if they have Porygon, I mean if they have Metagross. So what I think is, I think we'd need to target into Porygon with Max Ooze to have to have Earth Power go into Metagross. The issue obviously is speed tiers between por between uh, Metagross and Heatran. And I'm trying to think, what did I bring in the back? I know I have Clefable, which can come in handy. But what is the other thing? Um, I think either way it should be fine, right? Because Metagross can't get a speed boost, so they are going to swap out, and they're going to bring out, wow, okay, so they're going to bring out Sil Sylveon, which is great for us, because that means we're going to get a, a super effective max ooze into the Sylveon slot. We know that they can't pick up both knockouts with Metagross, so what I hope for, yeah, what am I hoping for is they target into Nihiligo. Because we want to keep Heatran around. Or we're like we want to get Clefairy to get set up. Okay, so that's actually that's even better. Because now we're going to be able to get a huge max ooze off into the Sylveon. Which is going to pick up a knockout. And now it is just going to be Metagross and Porygon. Which cannot really do much versus uh, all four of my Pokemon. I still don't want to say it's over. Because of the fact that Metagross is just inherently a very, very scary Pokemon to deal with, but what? I should have I should have Thunder Thunderous in the back? Did I bring Thunderous or Oshifu? I feel like I definitely brought Thunderous. But either way, Thunderous does have um Lash Out, so it's not necessarily the scariest thing. And we do have redirection. Oh god, that was my knuckle. We do get the attack boost on Porygon 2, which I think is a really big deal. Uh, and, oh, we have Tapu Fini in the back. That's actually really bad, because that means my only damage onto Metagross is this Heatran. So I'm going to actually substitute with Nihiligo and swap into Tapu Fini, because I don't want to, I don't want to proc a policy. And so what I'm hoping to do is set up a Reflect with, um... Tapu Fini, because yeah, I need I need that Metagross. I mean, not the Metagross, the Heatran. Okay, so Tapu Fini is a bad call. Uh, we do get the substitute off, which is nice, because we can really just kind of try and stall out Metagross. They're going to Max Quake, hopefully. Okay, they're going to go into Nihiligo, which is fine. Because now, what? We're, we're just trying to stall out their max turns. We know that that is turn number one. Um, <clears throat> okay, so they do, they do unfortunately get the trick room off, which makes this a little bit tricky. I still think, God, oh God, Tapu Fini. I don't know why I brought Tapu Fini. <sighs> Let's protect Nihiligo and go for a reflect on Tapu Fini. I think if we can... Basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm I'm trying to just stall out Metagross's max because I think 
once its max is done, we should be in a really good position. It is a little bit tricky though, because Metagross is getting a special defense boost. So not only do I need to stall out um, the boost it's getting, but I do need to stall out the Sandstorm. Okay, so they pick up, they're gonna pick up the knockout, which is really unfortunate. I was hoping that it wouldn't knock out through Protect, but it does. <sighs> Ooh, this is bad. Cause it, yeah, they're gonna be at plus three. They're gonna be at plus three special defense. We do get the Reflect up. We do have Nature's Madness with Tapu Fini. So that's actually um, a pretty strong thing. And there's the fact that the um, Sandstorm is gone. So I could bring a Clefable. I don't... Yeah, I'm going to bring out... I'm going to bring a Clefable. I think... What? We can... Protect the Clefable, Nature's Mad... Oh, their max is done. Okay, I thought their max had more turns. So this is still a little bit scary. I'm going to... I'm going to go for the Protect, because I don't want them to do a ton of damage into me. And I'm going to Nature's Madness the Metagross. This like, is still a little bit tricky, because of the fact that we do need Heatran to come out safely. And we know that while we do have the Shuckaberry, that's only going to work one time. So what? I mean, we do. We still have Taunt on Tapu Fini, which is really nice. Yeah, it's just how do we bring out? Okay, that's actually fine with me. Go for go for the eerie impulse all you want. Um, we can. Oh, word! Thunder Punch into Fini. Not gonna do that much. <sighs> we miss the Nature's Madness. Uh, I'm going to go for a life do and another nature's madness. And I need, I mean, I need Feeny. I need Feeny to live. And this is actually, oh God, I wish I had not brought Feeny. Clefable is going to take not that much. We are going to get the life do off, which is great. So we do get uh, a bunch of recovery. And so what I'm hoping is we can kind of create a scenario where Heatran is the obvious choice. They're gonna, okay, Iron Head into Clefable. I just, I just need to get um, off of Nature's Madness. We do connect with Nature's Madness. So that's great, because we're gonna lower Metagross's HP significantly. Honestly, I'm fine to just keep going for Life Dew, and Nature's Madness is half of uh, it has the target's HP. Yeah, let's just keep Nature's Madness in. You can go for... Oh, smart. Very smart. What are we going to see? We're going to see an Eerie Impulse onto the Clefable, which honestly is fine because of the fact that we're not really going for attacks. We're just recovering with Life Dew to make it so Metagross can't really do anything. Because, yeah, we just want... It's weird, because we want to safe switch in into um, Heatran, but at the same time, we don't really want to lose either of our Pokemon. Uh, I'm going to go for a Protect this turn and just try and get another Nature's Madness onto this Metagross. Because I just want to... Get rid of get it as low as possible because I can't really afford to have um, what's it called Heatran come in and Metagross live. We do, yeah. We continue to just pick up big damage onto uh, this Metagross, big damage, quote unquote. But that's just like I said, as a result of the uh, what's it called the life do. Um, I'm gonna swap out to Heatran expecting them to go for an iron head and i'm going to set up another reflect if they call the switch that's really really bad but mm, yeah it's tricky because of the fact that okay so they're going to go for ice beam which is great that's going to do nothing we're going to see okay even better we're going to get the iron head into heatran that's going to do nothing tapu fini is going to set up the reflect so I expect Heatran, I expect to double up into Heatran this turn. So I'm going to protect it and I'm going to go for a taunt onto Porygon. 
So that way it cannot your impulse into the heat trans slot. I think it still is uh, going to be really tricky just due to the fact that, um, oh, they have earthquake. Very interesting. So that, that is actually fairly helpful because of the fact that it, that it is spread damage. So they're going to hurt their own Porygon as well. So, I mean, that Metagross is at 25%. So I feel really confident. I could just go for, yeah, I'm going to go for an Icy Wind just because we need damage. I don't actually know who's slower. They're going to get the Ice Beam off into Heatran, which like, yeah, you're just trying to reduce the amount of damage. Interesting that they go for Iron Head. We do connect with the earth power, which is huge. And that, thank God, that picks up the, the knockout. So now, um, this is actually a really awkward spot because we do, we need to get Porygon in a position where it cannot set up Trick Room. So it depends on where when the taunt's gonna wear off. So there is one turn of Trick Room left and it has, oh, it has two more turns of taunt. So. I think this is fine. We can just go for an Earth Power and uh, Nature's Madness and just make it so the Porygon can't recover. Yeah, because even if even if they could recover, we did have um, Clefable in the back and we could just continuously uh, life do and they don't have enough damage into us. So we would have played to timer. So yeah, that one was actually surprisingly closer than I, I originally thought it would have been. I think, like I said... Um, Having Tapu Fini in the back, I don't necessarily know if it was the wrong choice in the end. I think the Nature's Madness really helped, and the fact that I was able to set up the Reflex, I think, made it the good call, but at the same time, it was really scary. I think if they hadn't set up Trick Room, then Fini would have been the wrong choice, but because of the fact that they were able to get it up, Fini made a lot more sense. But uh, really good match so far. I'm enjoying this team, and yeah, let's just keep rocking and, and move to the next one. All right, game number two. So this is a Cole Alecki team. So it is uh, Reggie Alecki with Dragapult, um, Landorus, a Urshifu, Colossal, and Rillaboom. This is uh, this is hard because of the fact that Tapu Fini does not have a water move. So we can't really do, we can't like knock out the cult. Actually, we can do, we can do this, right? Because Clefable will be able to redirect the uh, Max Vocalith and then um, Nihiligo can pick up the knockout, right? Nihiligo shouldn't really be worried about anything else. So I think these two are a good option. Um, I think Tapu Fini is a good option as well, just because of the fact that it offers the uh, support. And then Heatran, probably not. I'm going to go with our Shifu. I know we haven't, this has been more of a nah core, I guess. I mean, not even a nah. We didn't even use the rest of the core the first time. But yeah, I mean, this Tapu Fini set's really cool. It's really fast. And the fact that it can set up really quick taunts, reflects and stuff like that, I think is really nice, but it is, I think the lack of muddy water for Icy Wind can be really tricky. Cause if it, honestly, if it had it, I probably would still, I would have probably maxed Feeny against Colossal, but okay. So we're going to see Cole Dragapult. And I think, yeah, I think the, the play is to go for, um, to go for the follow me and the max rockfall into colossal the big fear what is the big fear the big fear is protect from colossal yeah protect from colossal to trigger a policy and taunt from dragapult cuz then i can't go for follow me the subsequent turn or what you you protect colossal and one shot I mean, yeah, Nihiligo is going to take a fair bit from Surf. So, yep, okay, so we are going to see the, the Colossal Max. I think now it really depends on what 
my opponent goes for. Yeah. Um, I think unaware is better than having the friend guard here because of the fact that we will not take the extra damage from Volkolith. So let's see. We're going to see no max guard. I think, I don't know how I feel about that choice because it means that, um, yeah, so you're going to trigger the policy immediately. Nihiligo takes not that much. Colossal is going to have its steam engine activated. Luckily, we're going to have Clefairy not take as much damage from the, uh, what is it called? The Vocalith as it normally would due to the fact that it has unaware. And yeah, I mean, it, it tanked that super, super, super well just due to the fact that it didn't have to deal with the plus two. We are going to set up our own Rockfall. I hope this picks up a knockout, which, yeah, it's going to get a knockout. And I think that, that that's a really big deal because we do now have more redirection with Clefable if need be, as well as like a really strong um, Nihiligo because they, what, Regieleki probably is their best answer into Nihiligo, but even then that that's, this is a really terrifying spot for my opponent because we have redirection with Clefable. It is going to take a lot from that Volklift, 75 down to 42. So yeah, it can't live another hit. But what I'm thinking is what, go for a life do anyway, or if they bring out Landorus, that's probably the scariest thing because of the fact that they can go for an earthquake. But even then, yeah. Okay, so they're going to bring out Landorus, which is fine. Um, hmm. I'm kind of tempted to... What is, so what is Tempofini speed? It is 146. I don't think that that's faster than Landorus. Oh, we have our Shifu. We don't have Thunderous. Uh, um, I'm going to just try and go for a life do. I don't think we're going to get it. And I could max guard. Or Shifu does not speed Landorus. Um, I'm just going to go for the rock fall. Right? You could rock slide. Dragonfold's going to set up light screen. Okay, so that, that makes a lot of sense. You're just trying to reduce the damage output. We are going to connect the Rockfall onto the Landorus. It should hopefully... Almost a KO, not quite there. They're going to go for Earthquake, which picks up the double... Why doesn't it affect Dragapult? Does Dragapult not take partner damage? Interesting. Okay, so I learned something new about Dragapult. But we do have we do have Tapu Fini and Urshifu. So this is still, I think, a really a really good spot overall. Um I what? I might The fear is I don't know. Okay, so we know that they have Surf, we know that they have Light Screen. Because what I'm thinking is we protect are we we could reflect reflect protect I think yeah because I don't actually what icy wind and go for a wicked blow into Landorus Okay, so they're going to Breaking Swipes into Landorus. Landorus is going to get an Attack Drop, but... I mean, not Landorus. Or Shifu's going to get an Attack Drop, but that should be fine, because, yep, Wicked Blow will um, still be a critical hit. So that's fine. And now let's see how much this Icy Wind does. I don't actually know if it'll pick up a Knockout. Icy Wind will do... Yeah, not that much, uh, which is tricky of the fact that yeah you're not taking that much recoil damage but we know breaking swipe doesn't do that much the question though ugh, there's still vocal with chip yeah the question is what do you have what do you have in the back dragapult's not super scary because we can very easily just go for a sucker punch okay so they have oh uh, they have regieleki 
Uh, we go for that and we wicked blow the Regieleki. Yeah, we have to Regie. Oh, that's so tricky. Regieleki, yep. Electroweb, unfortunately, is a double connect. Urshifu and Tabufini hang on. So now I don't think Urshifu will live the breaking swipe, which makes this really unfortunate. If I, yeah, I mean, what could I have done? I could have, yeah, breaking swipe. Let's see. If I live with Urshifu, 27 down to, okay, we do live, which is actually a really good spot to be in. The Wicked Blow should pick up the knockout on Regieleki, right? A Regieleki, yep, easy knockout. And now we just need to hit this Icy Wind with Tapu Fini which it does connect. Are we going to get the knockout? Yes, okay, very cool. I was, oh wait, do they still have something in the back? No, right, yeah, they don't have anything in the back because they did drag coal with Lando and Aleki. Nice, very cool, glad we were able to pull that off. I was definitely scared. I think if we had missed the Icy Wind, it would have caused things to be a little bit tricky. Oh wait, what is, okay, so what is Dragapult's ability? clear body. So why didn't it take damage from Earthquake? Did I just not see that? Yeah, because Dragapult is dragging Ghost, so it definitely would take that damage. That's a little weird. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. That's honestly the only thing that I can, can think of. But yeah, pretty standard team that, yeah, not much to say. It's a, a Dragapult Colossal. This is actually a really cool Landorus set. It is pretty bulky, so I'm interested to know what the calcs were for that. But what did... Yeah, wait. Uh, one last thing. Dragapult. Yeah, it only had Breaking Swipe, Reflect, and Light Screen and Surf, so it couldn't really have done much to Tapu Fini. It could have set up the Light Screen, actually, but even then... Yeah, because it would have depended on how much damage uh, our Shifu took. But yeah, very cool. Nice, nice game so far, and let's play one more with it and hope we can continue this winning streak. All right, battle number three, and this is a, a really Trick Room-focused team because it is uh, Torkoal with the Milotic. You have a Dusclops, a Marowak, what's it called? Comfy, and Rhyperior. So this is, this is actually a little bit tricky because of the fact that this is a really unconventional Tapu Fini. Otherwise, Tapu Fini, uh, I mean, Heatran is actually a really, really good option. So I like Thunderous Heatran with the idea that, yeah, Thunderous um, does really well into the uh, Milotic, which is really the only thing that's stopping Heatran. And then from there, Heatran has a, a really good matchup into Torkoal, into the Rhyperior, into the other stuff. So we, we can stop the, the Trick Room pretty, I don't want to say pretty easily using these two. Uh, other than that, I like Rashifu for priority. And then, uh, do I want to do Tapu Fini? Tapu Fini is nice. It is very physical. Um, Tapu Fini or Clefable, or Clefable? Clefable, they don't actually have a really good nuke into it. I'm going to go with Clefable. I think Urshifu might have been the wrong play. Uh, one thing to be really cognizant about that I actually just just remembered is the fact that they have Marowak. So I can't necessarily just go for a big max lightning into a Milotic. So what are they going to lead with? They're going to lead with a Rhyperior Comfy. So... Hmm... Uh, this is actually really tricky. I could double up. What, if I double up the Rhyperior? I don't want to just like lose Heatran turn one. This is tricky. Um. Superpower, I could just protect. Because I guess the question is, what do you think is the bigger threat? I'm going to do this. I'm Because, yeah, this is hard. 
I need them to assume that the Landorus is, I mean, not the Landorus, the Thunderous is the threat. Because if the Thunderous is the threat, I can switch into Clefable the next turn and use Redirection to get rid of the um, Rhyperior. But if they make the call that I maxed Heatran, wait, did I not max Heatran again? God. Uh, well, this, I guess, <laughs> works out because now I don't have to worry about who I'm losing. We do pro or they do proc their own weakness policy, so we're in decent shape. We do get a little bit of residual chip, and then Earth Power, a lot of residual chip. But the problem is they have Comfy. Okay, so they are going to, as we see, they're going to go for Thunderous, so that's fine. So now what we have to do is we have to, yeah... Comfy is going to make it hard. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to follow me with Clefable and then taunt with Heatran to stop Comfy from getting off recovery. And then I need to hope that... I mean, Clefable should live a hit, right? It has a ton of HP investment and a decent amount of defense as well. So we can do this and then we taunt the Comfy with the idea that we just want to... Okay, that's fine. You're going to go for the max guard. Oh, you're going to trick room. Which is actually even better. Because now... Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're definitely going for trick room. Which is perfect. Because now we make it so the Rhyperior can't get healed. And they cannot set up. So I'm guessing they're probably going to swap out Comfy. And looking at what they have in the back, I feel really... Comfortable going for a Moonblast into this slot, and then a Max Quake here. I think it'll be a little bit tricky, though, because, yep, okay, so we're going to see the switch. I'm hoping, f it's probably my Lodic. Oh, it's Marowak, which actually actually makes a lot of sense, because then, what, Marowak has Lightning Run? Well, you don't have to worry about Thunderous. You're just going to go for a strong Ground-type attack into Heatran. But we do have Shuka, but oh, it has um the Bone Club that hits twice. This is actually though still a little awkward because of the fact that they can switch in Comfy pretty safely and then just go for uh, Trick Room the subsequent turn because we don't have any sort of redirection. I mean, not redirection, any sort of taunt move on Clefable. So we do pick up the knockout onto the Rhyperior. Obviously, the thing that I'm worried about most is my Lodic. We know that they have Marowak. We know that we can at least get some redirection, and we do get some chip with this Moonblast, and it's gonna do it's gonna do half, which is actually really nice to see. I think that I really forget how bulky, I mean not how bulky, how weak um, Marowak is. So okay, so they're gonna bring out Comfy. I think we should. Mm, I'm going to go for a Moonblast onto Comfy, and what is stronger? Let's go for a Max Quake. Right? That's so tricky, because I need to get damage onto it, and yeah, oh, that Floral Healing makes it really hard, because I can't let it just keep healing Marowak back up, because otherwise like Marowak's just going to run through my team. So I'm hoping that this double up onto it will pick up the knockout. We're going to see quite a bit of damage, and I'm hoping Clefable does enough to finish things off. Or if they go for like an Earthquake, we're going to see Moonblast. How much is Moonblast going to do? Moonblast will bring it in range of Sandstorm. So yeah, they're going to Bone Ring. Unfortunately, Shuka is only going to work on the first one. And... Oh yeah, that <laughs> Heatran's going down. Heatran goes down, but we got rid of we got rid of Marowak, or we got rid of Marowak's recovery. We do have Clefable, which is able to heal up a ton of HP for my team. And what we have Feeny in the back? Do we have Feeny or Shifu? I forget. We have her Shifu. Okay. Uh, hmm. 
That's fine, because we can go for redirection. And they have Torkoal. Okay, so they have... Ooh. They have Torkoal. Okay, um... So we have... Okay, so we have to do... We have to do follow me. And then... Wicked Blow into the Torkoal. Because we need to preserve the Sash. Right? Because if we get... If we get Torkoal low enough... Its eruption should not do that much. So that's the goal. We do have a guaranteed one hit. Let's see how much this Wicked Blow does. Luckily, we don't have to worry about the sand anymore. Okay, that is <laughs> not enough. Um, Clefable takes a little bit more than I would have liked. They do get the Burning Jealousy off. Ugh, yeah, that's... Life do and... Do I have... What is my out? Yeah, I don't think I can win this one at this point. What, we... I would need to... Li I would need life do. So I would need to survive... What, I can... Yeah, let's try this. Because what I'm hoping is if, if Wicked Blow knocks out the Marowak, then we can get the life do off before the Burning Jealousy. It does not... Oh, we do get the life do off first. Okay, so let's see. 56 to 107. God, that's actually not that much. Yeah, we're not going to be able to take another hit. Unless Bone Rang misses. That's actually a really big deal. Yeah, that, as long as we live... <sighs> nope, Shifu goes down. But, I mean, Clefable, Clefable does... Okay, so Clefable will actually... How many turns of sun are left? Three turns of sunlight. I can actually pick up the knockout onto Marowak. So if I live this burning jealousy, I think I actually might have a chance with Clefable. So Marowak, yep, gets knocked out. Uh, clear small. Oh, wow. Just kidding. Clear small, 74, down to 48. So we will actually recover HP off of a life do. So we do have we do have a way of recovering up while they do not. So 74 is what? 6 uh 26 HP. So we're up to 99. They're going to solar beam. Oh god. 99 This actually is probably going to do a pretty large chunk. Let's see how much it does. 99 to 20. Oh, because it's a crit. But there is one turn of sun left. All right, so we are going to go for a protect. Because at this point, we're just trying to recover a lot of HP. The problem, though, is we're not actually recovering quite that much. But because the sunlight has faded... They're gonna do significantly less damage with their rock with their fire moves. So let's see. Life do from 20. I just need to be above 20 after this turn. And so we gain we gain 51 HP in eruption. How much is it gonna do? Okay, just kidding. Yeah, so we unfortunately lose this because, yeah, we take too much off the eruption. I'm trying to think, was there was there a better way to have played this endgame? Oh, if they had gone for Burning Jealousy, I think we would have actually been able to live another one. So maybe, we, maybe the right play would have been to recover. That's a little tricky. I think... I think there definitely was a way to play that end game out that let us win. I think what? Cause Rhyperior Rhyperior I think we would have been in a much better place if we had maxed yeah, if we had maxed turn one, we would have taken care of the Rhyperior early. Mmm no, because we wanted to taunt we wanted to taunt the um comfy. 
Yeah, I don't know. This was this was definitely hard. I think I could have played it better. I think leading with Thunderous wasn't the best call because I lo- I immediately lost Thunderous turn one and was playing from a huge deficit. And I think, I don't know, I was actually shocked at how little damage your Shifu did uh, against both Marowak and Torkoal because I, I mean, I had to target into Torkoal. I guess what I could have done is, no, yeah, there's not really a good answer for that. But I mean, the team is really cool. I'm really excited to play some more games with it. And yeah, hopefully we can keep rocking and rolling and I'll see all of you tomorrow. And until next time, I hope all of you are wonderful and I'll I'll see you then.